it's a great pleasure for me to welcome you to this uh, one-day workshop. That's the web page of the institute, this institute, the Institute of Mathematical Sciences. Here is the welcome page for this program. Uh, put mobile phones in silent mode, better still, switch them off. Eatables are not allowed inside the auditorium. Free lunch, snacks, and beverages are served during the breaks. They are meant to be enjoyed no less than the talks. But stand in queue for snacks and for lunch. Okay? Let's maintain discipline. So there is a quiz at the end of uh, the day. The purpose of that is to get you to pay attention to the talks. It's not meant to grade you, so relax. It's open notes, so you can use your notes, or whatever notes you take during the talks. And it's, of course, based on the talks. Listen attentively and take notes. Get your doubts cleared by asking questions. About the title itself, it's an allusion to this famous quote by uh, Thomas Edison. Genius is 1% inspiration, 99% perspiration. The workshop is an attempt to provide a bit of inspiration. For any inspiration to be effective, it must be backed up by 99% perspiration, which is hard work over the long term. Okay? With that, let me, it's a pleasure for me to introduce uh, our uh, first speaker of the morning. We have four talks. It's by Professor Amritanshu Prasad, uh, who is a faculty member here at this institute in the mathematics group. Uh, I will mention briefly his, uh, his academic career because it's very typical of a person who is uh, wanting to pursue research in a career in research in mathematics. Uh, so he did his uh, schooling in the campus, uh, in the Kendriya Vidyalaya on the Indian Institute of Science campus. As you might have heard, Indian Institute of Science is a famous uh, institution, one of the most famous institutions in this country. And they do have a BSc by research program okay, in mathematics too. So that's something very relevant for you. Uh, he did his, uh, after that, he joined this BSTAT program in ISI Kolkata. Right there is the website of ISI Kolkata. And if here is uh, their academic programs, a list of their academic programs. And you see that there is BSTAT honors and BSTAT, uh, that is bachelor's in statistics. That's what he did. You may visit this page later uh, if you want to get more information. And I also want to highlight at this point that the ISI Bangalore um, unit, the Indian Statistical Institute in Bangalore, has also a BMath program. Okay, that's, uh, that's right there. That's the Bachelor of Mathematics program at ISI Bangalore. Okay? So then he went on to do a PhD. After his BSTAT honors, he went on to do a PhD in mathematics from the University of Chicago. Then he spent a few years as a postdoctor, you know, postdoctor, well, postdoctoral fellow in uh, Montreal, Canada, in Max Planck Institute, Bonn, and in IHES in Paris before joining this institute as faculty. Uh, it's great pleasure to welcome Amrit Anshu. OK, um, Raghavan, thank you for uh, introducing. Thank you for organizing this program. It's a lot of work goes into this. And it's nice to see all of you here. So um, for today, for this talk, um, you'll have to team up. So we'll be making some things. And uh, it's good to be the group of uh, five or six or four, as you can arrange it. So most of you have come in schools. So maybe you can just team up with your classmates from the same school. Is that? Uh, so can you just think about how to form these teams? Yeah, is it anybody needs to, is there some lonely person who needs a team? Nobody? 
So, we will be folding some things um, and so we will we'll need to have I mean we will have to fold 6 of something. So, if each person has to fold 6 by himself it will take very long. So, I thought maybe each of you can fold 1 or 2 of them and uh, so it does not matter if your team has 6 people or 5 people or 4 people uh, you will be fine. Okay, so, so what I am going to talk about today are um, the platonic solids. So, there are um, um, maybe you know before we really uh, start talking about them in a formal way let us just uh, look at them. So, you in this slide there are pictures and here on the table I even have uh, uh, models of them. So, let us see yeah. I need the slide. First slide. Mm, yeah. Hmm. This thing has a light. Where is the light? Light, light. Oh, okay. Thanks. Yeah. Good. So. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So you can see this, right? So what is this? Do you know what it's called? It's a tetrahedron. It has um, it has four uh, vertices, these corners, and it has um, four triangular faces, and it has how many edges does it have? Well, let's see there are 3 along this triangle and then there are 3 more. So, it has 6 edges. Okay, so, this, this one probably you have seen um, I do not know have you seen this in nature somewhere? Pyramids, Pyramids really? No, th those have square bases. It is not very common, but you may have seen it in chemistry in organic chemistry. So, what does methane look like? So, methane would look a bit like this in the sense that there would be a carbon atom right in the center and then there would be 4 hydrogen atoms on the corners. Um, this one I am sure you have all seen, it is a cube. Okay, this is really common when you play Ludo, uh, Monopoly, when you chop vegetables. Uh, Right, so they, these are really common. There are um, strangely, there's this one which uh, this is a very strange one. So this is called the octahedron, and it's uh, it's not very complicated. Uh, whoops, can you see it? Let's see if I can zoom out. No, okay. So that's yeah. So let's see if I can raise this a bit. Yeah, so this is the octahedron. This again has triangular faces, but now instead of here there were just four triangles, here there are eight triangles, hence octa, octahedron. So it has uh, eight triangles, and uh, this also had triangles, the same like equilateral triangles, but this had only four, and this has eight. And if you look at half of this, then this looks like a pyramid. But have you ever really seen it anywhere? Maybe in chemistry you may have seen it. I don't know. Is there? Hmm? There's some molecule atom which has valency eight. Okay. So, but if you look at half of it, it's just a pyramid, like an Egyptian pyramid. So it's like two Egyptian pyramids stuck to each other. This one was the last of the platonic solids to be discovered even though it is quite simple. Um, the reason probably being that it is so simple that you do not recognize it as something very special. And let us look at the two really cool ones. So, here uh, I have let us see Mr. Prasad gave me a beautiful model here. So, and I have made a not so beautiful model here. So, um, do you, does anyone know what this is called? 
do deca hedron. Do deca meaning it has 12, do is 2 and deca is 10, it has 12 faces. The faces are pentagons and uh, it has I think 20, 20 of these corners, you can try to count them. So, there is like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 here and then on the next layer may be uh, more used to this one. So, the next along the you know equator there are another 10 and then there are 5 down here. So, there is 20 corners. Um, how many edges does it have? I am not so sure. Um, all right. So, that is that is the dodecahedron and uh, there is another beautiful one and that is called the icosahedron. And this again, there's triangles again. Each face is a triangle, right? Maybe we can zoom in a bit. This is uh, each face is a triangle, and there are um, twenty faces. You see, there's one up here, and then one, two, three, four. Uh, let's see, how does it work? So, maybe you could do 1 plus 3 plus 1, 2, 3, 4. Hmm. It is a bit tricky to count them, right. So, take my word for it, it has 20 faces. And, uh, we will we'll, we'll talk about how these two are related a little later. So, these things are um, origami models of these uh, platonic so called platonic solids. So, um, we will we'll talk about them later, but I want to uh, show you how to make them. So, um, So, there is something that there is uh, origami, how many of you do origami? Huh? Sorry? It is ok? Yeah. Ok, so this, this is um, the home page of a mathematician Helena Verrill, she has a nice origami page. If you do not do origami, it is never too late to start, I started uh, this year. So, <laughs> it is it is a lot of fun, um, you may have done ruler and compass constructions in uh, school. So, you can do a lot of those with origami just with paper folding, uh, but you can do more, you can trisect an angle with uh, origami. Um, in fact, I think somewhere here there is a angle trisection, if you look at this, there is a, a algorithm for angle trisection using paper folding. So, it is pretty interesting, it is it's a great way to learn uh, mathematics, especially if you like working with um, uh, your hands. And here she has, uh, uh, the, the, as I told you triangles are quite ubiquitous in these uh, polyhedra and um, this, uh, this uh, something that uh, uh, Helena uh, and uh, another person called Ka Kazuyo uh, Inou uh, designed, these are modules. So, mo it, strictly speaking in origami you would start with one square sheet of paper and make something and you are not allowed to cut or glue, only fold and uh, or tear or anything. So, it is just like um, this is um, uh, take some time to so, see. This is an amazing piece of origami. So, this started out as uh, one square sheet of paper, probably pretty large, right. So, and it is it is uh, folded. Um, here I had shown you an octahedron which I made with uh, uh, modular origami. This one is a modular origami octahedron, and here is one which is like pure origami octahedron. This one was quite a bit harder to make, it uses only one piece of paper, one sheet of paper and there is a, there is an amazing book I have here. Um, it is, it is, uh, it is by John Montrell, it is, it is called 
a plethora of polyhedra in origami. So, he gives uh, designs for um, constructing various polyhedra and it is um, as he says here each model is for folded using only a single square. So, so this is strict strict origami and uh, you can see the table of contents it is really fun. Um, if you look at uh, the dodecahedron which I think is what uh, Mr. Prasad from Tiruvan Mur has uh, folded uh, that is uh, at the very end of the book page 110. Uh, yep. He says in designing this I certainly had to dig quite deeply and the thing has uh, 60 steps. So, this is this is this is hard I mean I think right now I am still not quite at this level, but I hope to get there uh, one of these days. So, it is something it is and uh, when you came in there was a movie playing that was a uh, movie called between the folds. It is it is a documentary about origami and talks about how it is used in engineering and uh, a lot of different things. So, coming back now to this uh, Helena Verrill's uh, page. So, Helena and uh, Kazuyo Inui uh, have designed this uh, module, it is it is just a piece uh, called um, called a uh, triangle unit and it is it is it is designed for um, um, building things whose faces are triangles. So, here I have already folded one and this is what it looks this is what the end result looks like. And um, it is it is basically it is got um, 4 triangle triangular parts it is it is like this parallelogram, but it is it is really made up of 4 triangles ok. And then there are uh, when you fold it up you get pockets into which you can tuck flaps. So, you join these things using pockets and flaps there is a more uh, traditional and well known um, uh, module called the Sonobi module. This is uh, oh, I have used this to make this cube. I, I can pull apart one of these cubes and show you a Sonobi module. Um, so, the, the, there are 6 of them one for each face roughly speaking and uh, they are all like again they have these flaps and pockets and um, yeah, they are pretty easy to put together actually. So, not too yeah, this is one of them and there's six of them in this thing. So, with this you can uh, make uh, I have made another um, polyhedron with it which is uh, here it is. So, this is called uh, what is it called uh, somebody's gem I forgot the name. Um, so, this is a polyhedron it is it is kind of if you want you can think of the faces as these triangles here 90, 45, 45 and it is got uh, 6 of these triangles. So, this is made with uh, Sonobi modules ok. So, so shall we uh, try to make uh, we will start with the tetrahedron since the easiest. So, what you need is you need to make 2 of these pieces. So, I will show you how to make them um, before we just I will show you by hand. Um, we will uh, just look at um, the folding pattern on the thing. So, you start with a square piece of paper and there are just about 9 steps. So, it is not a very uh, complex origami so to speak and then you have to put them together. The putting them together can sometimes be uh, interesting, but one in important point is that these things can be made in two different ways. One is the mirror image of the other. And you have to be very careful to have the right number of each kind. Okay, so so let's uh, take a sheet of paper and let us begin. So you all have little tables, I think uh, some of you don't, but uh, it's a bit tricky then because you need to fold uh, pretty accurately. So here's my sheet of paper. Uh, so the first step is to just fold it into 2 equal halves. So, try to make these folds as accurately as possible and uh, the creases should be neat. So, 
so was that easy so try to make it so that the edges match up perfectly otherwise later on you'll have trouble okay and then you do um, the other way as well if you like or you could do that later as well but anyway i'll do it now so okay so now i've got this square piece of paper which has been folded into uh, along the um, bisectors of the sides and now what i do is i fold the two edges into the center try to fold it exactly into the center so that this edge outer edge is aligned exactly with the line in the center i hope you can see the thing clearly yeah so both sides okay so my son calls this the cupboard right it's just like a cupboard okay great so everyone at this step some of you are still in the process no rush let's do it slowly the first time okay now you have this cupboard right everybody got a cupboard no take no rush take time okay so far so good okay so this is still not very difficult now you've got this um, you've got this line in the middle of your cupboard so what you want to do is you want to fold up to that line and you want to fold down to that line so now what has happened is your you've got a smaller square about one, exactly one fourth uh, in area as your original square sheet of paper now basically what we want are these uh, creases we, we we want to know where these marks are and the next step is my favorite so so you've got this cupboard <coughs> with four equidistant four shelf cupboard if you well yeah four shelf cupboard right so now what we this is this is really brilliant and uh, don't do it yet first try to understand what i'm saying so now you've got this um, this corner over here right and you've got this corner over here now what we got to do is we got to fold in such a way that this corner comes to this line this uh, top this line here uh, after one third of the thing okay and it has to the fold has to start from this uh, corner here this the crease in the center so just be careful when you are doing this so you have this is a bit tricky um, you need to make sure that your fold comes wait just wait let me show you there is no rush and then you take your time to do this because it is important that it be very accurate so can you see what I have done this this is the place where the half midway point uh, maybe right and I have um, I have taken this corner and I have brought it to line up with this crease here. So, so and this this should be a straight thing ending exactly at the midpoint and you will see that do not worry there is suppose there is this little extra flap it may look like a mistake, but it is supposed to be there after you fold is uh, anyone having trouble with this this is the tricky step yeah let me show you on her thing so we are at um, we are at step 4 okay so you see there is this a b fold the point a to touch the line c folding from b okay so we are at that step and then open out and now basically what we are going to do is we are going to repeat this with all the four uh, corners okay so we've done one 
we are going to do it on the other side as well. So, um, yeah, so what I am going to do is I am going to take this corner and fold it here. That is done. See, you have got this little these two flaps over here, it is nice and symmetric. Okay, so, I have been doing these for the last few days, so it may be I'm doing them pretty quickly, do not rush. And then you turn it around and then you do the same thing with the other two corners. So, you have done now all four corners, they have all been folded and I have got these nice flaps and now I just open it out. Uh, all I was interested in were these crease, creases, these, these different uh, points and so on. Okay, so, so I have opened it out. So, of course, do not worry, some of you may be slower than the others, but speed is not important, let us do it right. So, let me just uh, show you again on the computer what is expected. So, you, we should be at this um, step 5 behind the curtain uh, and then when you open it out you are in step 6. So, you just have this complicated crease pattern. Okay, so, do you have something which looks like this figure on the right hand side in step 6? Yeah. Okay. So, now what we are going to do is if you look at the top there are these um, there are these little triangles right and there is a you can form a they are all in a line. So, there is a little um, flap in the corner um, yeah. So, there are these little flaps in the corner and then there is this little triangle here. So, these three points they form a straight line and what we want to do is just fold in along that. So, try to do this accurately, so that your fold goes exactly through those points. If you fold it more or less you would not have a nice um, polyhedron at the end of the day. So, I have folded in one side. And you are starting to see some nice things. Here is like a nice equilateral triangle over here. It is pretty magical. So, it is quite amazing how people design these things that itself is a science. And then the other side too, try to make it as accurate as possible. Now, um, we are almost done. The next step there are two ways to go. So, uh, this is where now teams need to coordinate in the coordinate. In the end we will need uh, for the tetrahedron we will need two such modules, but there are two ways to do it. Um, you can so, let me do one way, but do not do anything yet ok just just wait. I will show you one way to do it and then I will show you the other way to do it. And what you want uh, are totally like um, for the tetrahedron you need two of opposite types and for the octahedron you need uh, four two of each type. So, you need three of each type at the end of the day. So, so the first type you start with um, the top right corner um, then maybe I should show you on the uh, computer first. So, uh, we are at uh, step 8 over here. Okay, so, um, so you see there is this um, there is this corner over here the first four uh, one quarter away from the left and then there is this midpoint along this edge. 
So you want to fold along that dotted line. Okay, that's step eight. Can you see that? Uh, right. So what you want to do is, don't do it yet, I'll, uh, because some of you will have to do it the other way around. So you fold this like this. And those of you who are folding the mirror image, instead of folding the top left corner, you fold the top right corner. Okay, let me uh, show you. There are two different uh, kinds of pieces you can get. Here I have uh, two of opposite orientation. So this is made. Oh, whoops. So um, so this is made with uh, folding the top. One of them is made by folding the top left corner. Yeah, this is made by folding the top left corner. And this is made by folding the top right corner. So so you see these are mirror images of each other. So what you'll want is so make sure if there are if there are um, an even number of you, make sure that half of you fold one way and the other half of you fold the other way. And if there's an odd number of you, well, make sure that as close to half as possible of you fold one way and the rest fold the other way. And then you can correct it next time round. Okay, so so let's get back to this. I'm going to fold it with the top left corner. So just discuss with your friends and figure out which corner you're going to fold. And I hope you understood where the fold goes from. Is it clear where the fold goes or should I put the thing, uh, let me put uh, Elena Verrill's thing again. Let me zoom in in fact. Here we are this uh, step 8, oops, we are at step 8 and you want to fold along the dotted lines, namely this line here and this line here. Half of you want to fold along these two lines and half of you want to fold along these two lines, the mirror image. It is very important, otherwise your things would not fit together correctly. Okay, so, um, and when you fold this, you will find something interesting that this corner up here comes to lie along this crease here. Do you find that? This corner comes to lie along this crease. See, you can see it on the right hand side picture. The corner comes to lie along the crease. May not be exactly as shown here actually. For me, it does not come on that intersection, but it comes to lie along this crease and that is the important thing. In fact, that is a slight mistake, but it will come to lie along that crease. So here I am doing my both my corners. So both your corners have to be folded in. And uh, yeah, I I have done some at home because I do not have a team to help me out. Oops. Hello, can you hear me? Sound? Yeah, okay, so good. So, so do that, and now you fold, you have got that crease, it will go right from this corner to the center of the other edge, opposite edge. And you can go from this corner to the center of this edge. And this is a triangle module. So does it look like this? Yeah. Okay. Some of you may be doing it more slowly. That's fine. Yes, sir. Yeah. So did you get till this step? Okay. Now you see there's this crease which goes from this corner 
to the midpoint of the other edge of the opposite edge. So, from the if you are folding the uh, top left corner, then it goes from the bottom left corner to the center of the top row. If you are folding the top right corner, it will go from the bottom right corner to the center of the top row. Okay, so, you want to just fold along that again. And then the other side too, you want to do the same thing. That crease is already there, you are just folding along it again. So, it's, it should be easy to find. And this is a triangle module. So, um, so if you look at it carefully, this is a beautiful thing. It's got, it's a parallelogram, but this parallelogram is made up of four equilateral triangles. Okay, now each team has got to have uh, six of these, uh, but in two pairs of three. I mean, there should be three uh, left-handed ones and three right-handed ones. Okay, so, I am going to fold another one, I have folded uh, some at home, I have got uh, four already, but since you guys are teaming up, I think you should be able to catch up with me. So, I am going to fold one more um, and some, well you can just fold another one, but make sure that each team has, uh, has six at the end of the day, three of one type and three of the other type. Is it clear? Upstairs people, I can't see your tables, so good. So, show me your wonderful, okay. I can see a lot of triangle modules, they look beautiful, yeah, great. Downstairs people, I can more or less see your tables, good. So, it looks like people are more or less, yeah. So, in the end, I want, I have three of these, I have only two of these, so I better make one more of these. Um, and I have brown, green, yellow, orange, blue. So, let me see if I have any other color I can use. Ah. How about purple? So, I am going to fold another one. If you want, you can watch me fold it or you can fold one yourself. So, actually I was supposed to do this other fold which I did not do, but I will make up for it by doing it now. Do you want, uh, do you want to see the, I think I will put the Helena Verils thing so that you can look at it again. Yeah, here it is. Okay, so, you got to make another one. If you are having trouble, let me know. If you have a team of six, you are probably already done. And the fun part is the after this, after you have made these modules, assembling them together is more fun. As you can see, even one of these things more or less forms a tetrahedron, right, because it has got these four equilateral triangles, but, um, but it does not hold together, right. If you leave it, it just comes apart. So, two of them of opposite orientation can be tucked into each other to form a nice tetrahedron that is uh, not going to come apart. 
So So now I have to remember which way I am supposed to fold the corners in that is the most important part. If you make a mistake there and then yeah. Okay, so I am almost done here. Uh, see, I didn't make my fold so carefully, and it's not. It's a bit. Yeah. So I hope now each team has something like this. Yeah. Okay. Now we are ready to do the most exciting part. Before we do that, let's just fold these so that these um, this uh, th there's a clean side. We want the clean side will go inside, and there's the messy side that will be outside. So you just fold them so that the messy side is outside, and each thing will by itself kind of form a tetrahedron. So, fold each one before we assemble, so that it will be easier later on. So, just crease them in the correct direction, so that each one by itself forms a tetrahedron, but this tetrahedron will fall apart the moment I. So, now to make the tetrahedron is uh, not so difficult, what you do is you take two of these. Now, the, the two end flaps, these are the flaps and the two middle ones have pockets and what you want to do is you take two of these of opposite orientation and you put the flap of one into the pocket of the other and then let us see I am always scared that I get confused and then you put the flap of the other one into the pocket of the first one. So, you have one and two flap of one into pocket of yeah. Oh, oh yeah, sorry. So, okay, so let us start like this. So, I have 1, let us clear off all this mess. 1, please tell me if you cannot see, I, because I am not seeing the board. So, flap of this is 1, this is 2, flap of 1 into pocket of 2, okay. And then you want to take this flap of this flap of this one into the pocket of the other one. So, each guy has a flap in the other guy's pocket. Okay. See and it is starting to form a tetrahedron, I have got these three triangles. So, now I have these loose ends up here and I just need to tuck them in. So, it is magic. Huh? Yeah. Rewind, let us see if this helps. Let, let me put the website. This may be even more confusing. So, first you put the flap of one into the pocket of the other, and then I this picture was uh, it is difficult to understand. Maybe I is this more helpful? Okay, so let us go back to the camera. Well, this is the easy one, so the next one will be more difficult. Okay, so I have got yellow and I have got purple, and what I do is, um, yeah, so firstly, it is good to kind of know how these triangles are looking here. Okay, so I will keep the purple one here. Now, it has got these two equilateral triangles. Okay. Um, so, so you keep it so that um, 
so there will be one triangle which is pointed downwards and you put the flap of the uh, other one into that downward triangle. So, you will get this um, 120 degree angle between these um, two things ok. So, that is the first step and the second step is kind of more abracadabra because it is three dimensional. So, you pick this up ok. Now, you see there will be this pocket on top right. So, so you want to tuck this flap into that pocket yeah. So, so there is this pocket on top you want to tuck this flap into this pocket and now you have got a pocket up here you want to tuck now it is kind of once you get the second step the rest just follows you just keep tucking whatever flaps you see into whatever pockets you see. It takes a little trying I mean anyone got it very good yes excellent. So, looks like some of you are starting to get it yeah good good. So, I see about 5 or 6 of them ready take your time it is ok. The other one is more confusing I hope I can do it. So, while you are figuring that out let me figure out the other one. See if you are going to do two of the same orientation then this will not work. So, you better make sure you are doing two of opposite orientation. Two of the same orientation will come up in the next. Yes, do it again ok let me let me pull this apart. Ok, number 1, number 2 both of them with their uh, messy side facing up ok and maybe I will pull this down so that now this corner of this guy goes into this see if it is like this I cannot it does not quite um, this is uh, maybe this works too yeah yeah they are the same. So, I guess that is ok, but make sure you are starting with things of opposite orientation if you are starting with two things like this then you are going to have some problems. So, so start with these ok now this at least is ok all right. Now, you just pick it up now this whole thing has to be three dimensional. Now, this thing will fold over right that it will kind of look like this. So, what you want to do is you want to bring the other guy around and tuck into its pocket ok and um, then you will have this this kind of triangular thing and what you want to do is this once you have this it is easy because now the things kind of fold themselves in by themselves I mean it, it more or less after that it is straight forward. So, just keep trying for a little while. And now, yep, great. Oh, yours is uh, the other way around. That's good too. Yeah. So he's uh, managed to do it so that he gets a 
one which doesn't show the pockets and the folds. So, so the tucking is done on the inside. That's a bit harder, in fact, I would think. Well, good. So, um, okay, some of you are still figuring it out. Yes, good. And those of you who have finished the tetrahedron can start moving on to the octahedron. Do not worry if you are working on the tetrahedron just finish that that is ok, there is no rush. For the octahedron what you need to do is start with two of the same orientation and then there will be other two of the opposite orientation. Oh dear where is it gone? Uh, I had one more I swear. Ah yeah, here it is. Okay, so so you have two of the same orientation. Oops, this mic. Oh, the wire is too long. Okay, so what you do is again you start more or less similarly, but now they have the same orientation. So so what you want to do is you want to um, do that. And now actually, if you look at a completed um, octahedron. It is a bit different from a tetrahedron in the sense that there should be 4 triangles sharing a corner great 4 triangles sharing a corner. So, you do not quite want it to work the same way. So, it is hard to kind of imagine how. So, it is very easy to kind of now because these are the same orientation. So, what I am doing is I am take going to tuck this corner into this flap uh, pocket and this corner into this pocket and this naturally needs to a folding see it is not the same now yeah same orientation correct, but the thing now you will get this sort of 4 triangles at a point. See I got this kind of like a like a bowl with 2 of these flaps sticking out. Okay, if you fold these flaps this thing will hold together and you can use it to drink tea during the tea break. Okay, so, we got to make another one with the two things of the opposite orientation. Are you getting this? See I it comes with these two flaps I just fold them in so that it does not fall apart, but we will take them out again. So, anyone got this can you show me? It is a bit harder maybe. You need to take two of the same orientation like this. You need to push this in here right. Something like this or it is mirror image. You may have this or you may have this. Okay, so, let us say you have something like this. Then you pick it up and now you have this flap here goes into this pocket here that is what you got to do you got to push this into this. In order to make that happen you need to take this thing and bend it a bit now it has to be a 3 dimensional figure. And when you turn it around you will have this kind of cup and if you want it to not fall apart while you fold the other one just push these things in ok. So, I have got one and then I got to do the other one. So, again I start with two of the same orientation and I push the flap of one of these into the pocket of the other and then I do this. Oh yeah, good thanks. Ok, so, so you start with two of the same orientation you put the flap of one into the pocket of the other, then you put the flap of this one into the pocket of that.
and then I get another tea cup. Okay, so now I've got these two tea cups. They, this paper is a bit slippery, um, so they tend to kind of slip out. But now what I've got to do? I've got these two tea cups with flaps sticking out of them, and these things have pockets. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the flaps of one tea cup into the pockets of the other. Uh, of course, I need to pull these out now. So, take some patience here. Uh, but this is much easier than um, the. I did a. I did a. Uh, what is it called? Icosahedron with these things, and that was really tough. So, yeah. you know, you just keep putting flaps into pockets wherever they fit. Uh, sometimes they may slip out, do not worry, just put them back in. <laughs> okay, so Two of the same orientation, I hope. Let me let me show you once more. So basically, you have to start with two of the same orientation and make that cup. And you're going to make two cups with opposite orientations. So this is the business end of things. If you have the same orientation, it will kind of tend to happen, you know, that it will become like this. So, so one pocket of uh, flap of one into pocket of other and then flap into pocket. So, it, it just that is it. And before you do this, make sure you fold it, crease your thing so that these things are, these triangles are easy to, you know, then it just tends to fold itself in the correct way. Okay, I will I'll, um, leave some models on the table here and you can later try to see how it, how they are folded. Um, I wanted to say a little bit about these things before I stop. So, let me just refold my note. Anybody got this octahedron? Oh, yes, no? Tetrahedron or octahedron? Ah, oh, octahedron. Okay, this seems to be hard. So, first is focus on making these cups. Anyone got one cup? No, do not show me. Yes, that is good. You got a cup. Cups, good, good. Now, make another cup. Cups with flaps. do not give up. Some of you are just making more and more tetrahedrons. You could do that, you could make three tetrahedrons with what we got. Oh, yes, there is a gentleman in the back who has got an octahedron. So, wonderful. Ah, oh, mine is now fallen apart, now I need to. I have been doing this for a while now, so now somehow to me it seems what is wrong with all these kids, why are they not getting it, but, but I have been doing it for a few days, so do not worry, it takes some time to figure it out, but, but this, this is uh, much harder, I mean this has uh, 10, 10 of those uh, modules, 5 of each orientation and then you need to keep putting them in and then when you put some in the other stick. Um, slip out. So, I cheated and I put some gum, but then of course, you should be sure you do not make any mistakes because you cannot take them apart. So,
so so you you get these things and let's let's just go back to my uh, presentation here so so what are these things these these are platonic solids why are they called uh, what, what what is it that makes a solid platonic okay so there are four properties the first is that it's a convex polyhedron so there are two big words here one is convex and the other is polyhedron so what's a polyhedron polyhedron just means that it's a solid but its its surface is made up of polygons so it's a solid whose surface is made up of polygons so here's a here's something which i would say is a polyhedron christmas is coming up right each of its faces is a triangle but it's not convex it's not convex there are points here on its surface but if i join those two points then the line which joins them is not good good so the the, the line which joins them is not inside it it's outside so that this is not convex but it's a polyhedron um here's something that's a uh, polyhedron but it's not a platonic solid let's see a uh, convex polyhedron which is not a platonic solid oh i had one uh where did it go ah here it is here this is a decahedron this guy oh yes here's my decahedron it's got it's got 10 faces which are all equilateral triangles okay um but it there's some more properties so what are the other properties the other one is its faces are regular polygons so regular polygon you know what it means right it's it's just all its sides are equal and all its angles are equal so equilateral triangle is a regular triangle a square is a regular quadrilateral and then you know regular pentagons and hexagons and so on and all its faces must be of the same size and shape that's the third thing and the fourth thing is the same number of faces meet at each vertex so if you look at this at this vertex how many faces do i have i have 1 2 3 4 so this is 4 um this vertex how many do i have 1 2 3 4 but this vertex i have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 10 so so this doesn't have that last property that the same number of faces meet at each vertex but a platonic solid must have all of these properties and why are they called platonic solids well um in in uh, ancient greece in athens there used to be an academy and uh, the academy was uh, headed uh, you know it was this guy called plato it was called plato's academy and plato is the gentleman in the center of this picture slightly to the left in the orange toga and the guy in the blue toga is aristotle and a little bit to the this is uh, this is a painting uh, uh, by rafael it's it's a beautiful uh, and on the right hand con, uh, on the right hand side you see this bald guy is teaching something that's euclid so so this is a uh, rafael's um, imagining of plato's academy and uh, in plato's academy they used to have these um, wise men come in and uh, it's surprising how much it looks like the present day science academies at least the hairstyles and the facial hair and so on is the same the clothes are slightly different but this guy here he's almost wearing a kurta and pajama kind of outfit so um so this is plato's academy and there there was a mathematician called uh, theaetetus and he um he actually uh showed that there are only five uh, regular platonic solids with these uh, with these four properties um see if you have uh, polygons you can have triangle square regular pentagon regular hexagon regular um septagon or heptagon heptagon regular octagon regular nonagon and you can go on and on and it becomes more and more like a circle okay and um, but but with platonic solids there are only 5 and if you want to see why there are 
um, well firstly you need to figure out what can the what can the faces be they got to be regular poly uh, polygons so can they be uh, can they be anything at all um, so the thing is if you uh, suppose the faces have to be reg, uh, regular polygons so say you could try with triangles now if you put six triangles they lay out flat so you can't have uh, six triangles meeting at a vertex you could have maybe five or 4 or 3. So, if you do 5 then uh, you end up with actually this uh, um, what is this called uh, 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 icosahedron, but you could fold it a little more and you could end up with 4 and that is what gives you the octahedron or you could fold it a little more and you end up with 3 uh, and that gives you the tetrahedron. Okay, if you try it with squares the only thing you can do is fold it like this with 3 squares meeting at a point and this actually will give you the cube and then you just try you know continuing it and here is one you can try with pentagons and this is what actually leads to you can only put 3 because if you try to fit the fourth one in here there would be no space right. So, so you can only do it with 3 and this actually gives you this um, I really like this 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 uh, uh, dodecahedron and can you do anything with hexagons not really because 3 hexagons will already the angle is 120 degrees. So, they would already lie out flat and so you do not get a 3 dimensional thing and 2 hexagons well you cannot have 2, two points meeting at a thing otherwise it just becomes again 2 dimensional right you need to have at least 3 to get a 3 dimensional figure. And that is it that was Theaetetus's proof, but, but more important than the proof is the understanding that comes with it. So, the fact that you know you can how do you construct this thing, what does it mean to be platonic and then the proof that there are only platonic solids. This seemed actually very simple because we were able to make the models and look at them visualize in three dimensions not in our mind, but really and um, that is you know an old uh, 417 to 369 BC. Um, I am already well over time, so I will stop now, but I uh, will just give you a couple of uh, uh, references. So, um, for this there is a book uh, by um, let us see it is called uh, it is called Euler's Gem. This is a nice book um, by uh, uh, my computer is in uh, bad shape. One sec, I will just. Yeah, I got it here. So, there is a book called uh, Euler's Gem by David uh, Richardson. This is a nice book, it is got a discussion of uh, not just the platonic solids, but also some other topological properties that they have and so on. And the other thing I said was Helena Verrill's website, I think most of you are comfortable using the internet. So, you should try to see learn um, learn the constructions of the other platonic solids with origami and Montrose book that is that is another uh, great resource. I am sorry for going over time, uh, but I will stop now. Oh, thank you.